Hey folks, this is Kalani. We had a whole bunch of updates on the patch 9.1 PTR this week. We have some more class changes with some nerfs and buffs for demon hunters in particular. There's a new reward for pushing higher end mythic plus dungeons to look at. Some professions updates are starting to show up in the PTR, including a potential method of upgrading our legendaries. And we have a new currency that comes from the new more difficult layers of Torghast. There's a lot to talk about, so let's jump right in. Let's kick things off with some class buffs, shall we? Demon Hunters will be very happy to hear that they'll be one of the first classes to receive some significant buffs in patch 9.1. Demon's Bite damage has been increased by 15%. The Demon Blade talent has also been buffed up by 15% to stay in line with Demon's Bite. Chaos Strike damage has been increased by 15%. And Annihilation's damage has been increased by 15% as well. That's a nice round of buffs to help Demon Hunters dish out a bit more single target damage and let's be honest those are the two buttons you're going to be pushing the most as a Havoc Demon Hunter so to get a 15% buff across all of them is definitely a nice boost. It's not all good news though I'm afraid the Unbound Chaos talent has seen a slight nerf taking the increased damage of Fell Rush down to 500% from 600%. I think Demon Hunters will still come out on top in this round though. The other class with a few changes this time around is the Rogue, specifically Subtlety Rogues. Shuriken Storm Rank 2 now increases Shuriken Storm's chance to crit by 15%. Some free crit chance is never a bad thing, right? Black Powder's damage per combo point was increased by 33%, but Black Powder Rank 2 went in the opposite direction, now causes targets with Find Weakness to suffer an additional 40% damage, down from 50%. That's not all though, Shadow Techniques now triggers more frequently, Backstab damage was increased by 20%, and the Gloom Blade Talents damage was also increased by 20%. There are some nice buffs in there, but I guess we'll have to wait and see if it's going to be enough for Subtlety Rogues to really shine once again. Moving on, patch 9.1 will also finally introduce a new reward for pushing past the plus 15 mark for Mythic Plus Dungeons. Pretty much every reward caps out at plus 15 right now. In Dungeon, maximum item level. Weekly Vault, maximum item level. Maximum upgrades via the Valor system. Seasonal mounts, even achievements. It all caps out when you've done a plus 15 key for every dungeon. Patch 9.1 is going to change that. A new set of achievements are being introduced called Keystone Hero. There's one for each dungeon, and to earn this achievement you need to complete the appropriate dungeon on a plus 20 key or above within the time limit. You may be hoping for higher item level upgrades for Valor, or a mount or title or something you can really show off for these achievements, and while there is some potential for more rewards being added to these achievements later on, right now they just reward you with a teleport to the dungeon you've earned a Keystone Hero achievement for. That's definitely going to be nice for anyone who runs a bunch of Mythic Plus dungeons, you can zip straight straight to the dungeon entrance without having to do any of the legwork yourself, making getting to your next keystone and your next dungeon adventure significantly faster. It might not be super duper amazing or exciting, but hey, at least it's something, and it's something that can be expanded upon in the future. Plus 20 keystones are going to be the next big target, and in 9.1 there will actually be a reason to try and push past plus 15. Another very interesting update, which is going to be incredibly useful for anyone hoping to take advantage of the Valor system in 9.1, or really any gear upgrade system going forward, is a change to the gear upgrade window. This is a very small tweak, but it's going to be an awesome quality of life change for sure. Right now in Shadowlands, when you take an item to the upgrade vendor, you have to go through rank by rank, one at a time, and spend far longer talking to this NPC than most of us would probably like. In 9.1, that's going to change. There will now be a drop-down menu for all of the ranks you can upgrade to with a total cost to upgrade to any given rank. So instead of upgrading a rank 1 item 11 times, you can just do it the once, assuming you have enough currency anyway. This will work for anima gear upgrades, PvP gear upgrades, and of course, Valor gear upgrades. Again, a small change, but definitely a welcome one. 
In other news, updates to professions are starting to slowly seep in through the cracks as well. We don't have too much to look at just yet, but it looks like there may be some changes coming to crafted gear. There are two new crafters marks on the PTR, creatively called crafters mark 3 and prestigious crafters mark. We aren't too sure where the prestigious crafters mark comes from just yet, but it looks like the crafters mark 3 recipe will be tied to the new reputation in Corthia, Death's Advance. You'll need to get up to Honored with these wonderful new allies before you can purchase the Crafter's Mark III. A Crafter's Mark III will set the item level of a piece of crafted gear to 180 and the required level to 60, so a little bump up from our current max crafted gear of 168. I don't think this will help out too many players unless they are completely brand new to the expansion or they're re-rolling for patch 9.1, but a higher base item level should help out at least a little bit. The prestigious crafter's mark works a bit differently. It will set a piece of crafted gear's item level to 200 and the required level to 60, but it adds a unique equipped effect, meaning you could only ever use one piece of gear that has been upgraded by these special crafter's marks at a time. Item level 200 crafted gear is definitely something to raise a few eyebrows, but the limit to one item makes it significantly less exciting and meaningful. It's worth noting that both of these items have been seen before when the Shadowlands expansion was still in beta. It's curious that they popped back up for 9.1, but that does mean that we could see some changes to these new crafters mark before the patch goes live. Another interesting update to Professions for 9.1 relates to Legendary Crafting. We know there are new ranks of Legendaries to upgrade to. Ranks 5 and 6 have already been data mined, which will take our Legendary gear up to a max of item level 260. From what we've seen so far, upgrading a Legendary isn't going to be all too different in 9.1, meaning we will need a new Rank 5 or Rank 6 base Legendary item, right? That seems to be the plan, but how you get those rank 5 and rank 6 base items seems to be significantly different in 9.1. Enter the Vestige of Origins. This is a new optional crafting material that you can add to any legendary crafting recipe to increase its item level. We're not sure whether the Vestige of Origins will pump up your base item to the next item level bracket or the next rank, or if it will skip all the way to rank 5. We can't test it out properly yet, but right now this is the only way to increase the item level of a base legendary piece, so all of the power for legendary upgrades will stay with the crafters as we move forward. If this item allows you to upgrade a rank 1 legendary base item all the way to a rank 5 legendary base item, that means all of the leveling up crafters have done up until this point will become more or less worthless going forward. But if you have to upgrade a rank 4 legendary to get a rank 5 legendary, well that's a completely different ball game. These Vestige of Origins items require one very special material to create. Corthium. This is another legendary material and we've only found one source for it so far, the new daily quests in the Moor. Curiously, it is not a bind on pickup material right now, which means it should be tradable and can be sold and bought on the auction house. So maybe the supply of this material is accessible to all players, but to actually make use of it you will need a crafting profession. Most of this is guesstimations at this point and it's definitely worth noting that the item is marked as a work in progress, which makes a lot of sense with how little we can test right now, but I think it's safe to say that upgrading legendaries in 9.1 might be a little bit more involved and it's going to be tied to this new Corthium material. We also have our first look at how Torghast may end up in patch 9.1. Information on Torghast in general has been quite thin so far, we still can't actually get into Torghast to test anything, but Wowhead's data drills are working around the clock I'm sure, and they managed to dig up some strings related to new Torghast layers and even new wings to explore. It looks like every single wing in Torghast will get four new layers added right onto the top, so we'll be able to delve into layers 9 through 12, with 12 being the new maximum. It also looks like the dev team is expecting these higher layers to be quite difficult. Layer 12 currently has an item level recommendation of 230. That's a very high item level recommendation when you think about it. That's higher than our current mythic raiding gear, and it's higher than the item level of normal raid gear from the new raid in patch 9.1. I'm very interested to see how high they're going to scale these new layers because Torghast can end up being very gear dependent which could lock out a few lower geared players. 
We're not too sure whether these higher layers will drop increased amounts of soul ash, but we have some hints that we might be hunting after something more important, soul cinders. This currency was previously named Mega Soul Ash, and now that it has a proper name, it also has a source. A raw source of power found within only the most dangerous layers of Torghast, used to fuel the Rune Carver's chamber. The most dangerous layers of Torghast surely mean these higher layers being introduced in 9.1, layers 9 through 12. If Soul Cinders follow the same pattern as Soul Ash, Layer 12 will be our new one and done difficulty for Torghast, and I assume we will need a lot of Soul Cinders to upgrade our legendaries to the higher ranks in patch 9.1. I know the word around the block has been no more Soul Ash grinds for legendary upgrades, and I guess that's still technically true because the grind will probably be for Soul Cinders instead. It's a new currency, it comes from the new higher layers, and it fuels the Rune Carver's chamber. There's not really anything else this currency could be used for except higher legendary upgrades. So get ready to delve into higher and harder layers of Torghast when patch 9.1 goes live. At least it's not just all the same thing though, there are also two new wings to look forward to. The PTR files point towards these two wings being called the Adamant Vaults and the Forgotten Catacombs. Hopefully we see some drastic differences in floor tiles, layouts, monsters, traps, all the usual stuff that makes Torghast at least a little bit interesting. I personally will keep my fingers crossed for a bunch of new anima powers too. Torghast changes are still in the early stages on the PTR, and as I said we can't really test anything just yet so expect to see more changes in the coming weeks. And that should get you all caught up with how the patch 9.1 PTR is unfolding. What do you think about upgrading legendary base items being tied to a new crafting reagent that might let you skip straight from rank 1 to rank 5? How do you feel about even higher layers of Torghast and another currency grind for the Rune Carver? And do you think that completing higher level Mythic Plus dungeons should have some shinier rewards, or are portals straight to the dungeons good enough? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.